Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of, and the Mountains of Western North Carolina and North Georgia. Our welcome words this morning are adapted from Allison Wohler. We gather here to be together because that is how we believe our lives are best lived, in curiosity and in conversation, in companionship and in love, in compassion and in service, in gratitude, in joy, and in song. It is, a good, it is good to be together with you this morning. My name is Mary Teslow and I'm pleased to be your service leader today. I'm joined this morning by Annette Watlington as our Zoom stage manager and Jude Lowry as our music coordinator. The Zoom chat box is available for announcements or other comments. Those who prefer to focus on the service can close it now and catch up later. Our church related announcement this morning, the membership committee wants to be in touch with our members and friends to discover ways that work best for them. In addition to the UU view emails, there will, they will be sending out occasional fellowship related informative emails to you when they feel it's helpful. Please watch for details in the UU view. You can also contact Bonnie Graham Mary, are you back? Let's see. You're back. We missed a little bit of that. Okay, looks like looks like we're good. Our fellowship is a light for liberal religion in the mountains that values diversity and the richness it brings to our community. Our celebration of diversity is reflected in the variety of our Sunday services. The title of today's service is Improvisation Part Two, Listening. We hope today's service enriches your journey. We are delighted this morning to welcome back our friend, Eric Bannon. Eric is a songwriter, storyteller, husband, father, and U.S. Coast Guard rescue flight crew veteran, backcountry adventurer, and cancer survivor with master computer science. Church's Community Church of Chapel Hill Unitarian Universalist will we'll be is most beloved by our congregation and many others, you are welcome here. Good morning. Everybody hear me okay? Get a thumbs up, some nodding heads there. Yeah, great. Um, <clears throat> some of you may know this, be familiar with this song. Um, if you don't, the chorus goes like this. Whoever you, whoever you are, whomever you love, However you came to be in this community, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. Now, I would invite you to sing along. Now, the great thing about leading worship over Zoom is um, if you're on mute, no one can hear you sing. So if you're not comfortable with people hearing you sing, that's okay because sing as loud as you can because no one can hear you. All right, here we go. Now start with that chorus. Here we go. One, two, three. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you came to be in this community, you are welcome here. Please mute yourselves. are joyful on yeah. your concern come share your story the jealous flame burns if your heart is broken you've been disowned come 
join our circle Turn off your phone Whoever you are Whomever you love However you came to be in this community You are welcome here you are searching, come on in. We're all on this journey that starts within. If you got a burden, come lay it on down. Raise up your voices as we gather around. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you came to be in this community, you are welcome here. Got the right to seek sanctuary, guided by the light. If you hear that calling, come join the fight. Marching for justice, candles lit in the night. Here we go. Whoever you are. Whomever you love, however you came to be in this community, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. Sing that last line with me now. Eric, thanks so much. That's so wonderful and such a great way to start. Our chalice lighting. Our chalice lighting is adapted from the Reverend Charles Howe. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. Improvisation brings us the delight of something new and unexpected. We light this chalice to affirm that new light is ever waiting to break through to enlighten our ways, that new truth is ever waiting to break through to illumine our minds, and that new love is ever waiting to break through to warm our hearts. May we be open to this light and to the rich possibilities that it brings. And now our opening hymn, 123, Spirit of Life. Thank you. 
unmute yourself, Mary. Thank you. Our offering words, improv like religion and community isn't a solo endeavor. Author and musician Tom Piazza writes in the Guide to Classical Recorded Jazz, in a jazz group, as in any community, certain roles need to be filled. Someone has to play the melody, someone has to keep time, and someone has to suggest the harmonic context. Playing in a jazz group and being a member or friend of this congregation involves both responsibility and freedom. Freedom consists of understanding your responsibility well enough to act independently and still make the needed contribution to the group. We are deeply grateful for the many and varied contributions of time, talent, and treasure to our fellowship and for your improvisation. And now Eric with our offertory song, If You Can't Fly, written by Eric and Joe Newberry. Okay, um, a little bit of context for this song. Um, I wrote this with Joe. We started this the day after the inauguration last year. Um, and it's, um, it's based on a quote by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And that quote is, um, if you can't fly, then you can run. If you can't run, then you can walk. If you can't walk, then you can crawl but keep on moving forward. Take a step in the right direction to the intersection where you turn. Are you the mirror? or the reflection that's the question but that's how we learn if you can't run then you can walk a little more listen a little less talk if you can't fly you can run out of the darkness into the sun we can love as a revolution heal the confusion and the pain can't you see it's a real solution there's no question there's no shame darkness into the sun when we learn to be forgiving it's gonna make the living worth its while without taking much. Dedication of our gifts. Gifts given in love and hope continue a cycle of love and hope. So may it be. 
Eric's sermon in song and story this morning is titled Improvisation, Part Two, Listening. Eric, we're looking forward to hearing more about this improvisation. All right. All right. <clears throat> Everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up? Nodding heads? All right. I have been on a musical journey for most of my life. But since 2019, this journey has taken me in a new direction. That direction being the art of improvisation, or should I say the, the practices of improvisation. And I say the practices because improvisation is not an art or a practice, but a set of arts and a set of practices that apply to life as well as music. Now here's a quote that opens the door for me every time I hear it. Improvisation is a gift, a necessity, a skill, a dance with the unknown. It is a practice of approaching the unknown, not with fear, but with curiosity and with trust that the path will be revealed. It's about staying awake. Excuse me, all senses vibrant as we learn to be available to it all, including the fear and the endless possibilities of each new moment. This quote is from the book Vocal River, The Skill and Spirit of Improvisation. This book was written by a, a woman named Rhiannon, who's a celebrated improviser and teacher of improvisation who continues to push the boundaries of what it means to improvise every day. Now, whenever I read something like this, I think about our fourth principle, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. I believe the fourth principle gives us permission to make friends with the unknown and the uncertain, and I am giving you permission right now to make friends with the unknown and the uncertain, if you need somebody to do that for you, okay? And if you need me to do it again, just send me an email next week. Um, now, my favorite definition of improvisation, I heard directly from Rhiannon, the author of this book, in a seminar. She was working with a student who was struggling a great deal, and I'm paraphrasing her right here. She says, improvisation is the art of forgiving yourself again and again and again. So let's, let's take a look at a short list of the essential spiritual practices that I believe are part of improvisation. Now, if you're taking notes, please feel free to make your own list if you think I've, made, I've left something out. Number one, forgiveness. In a musical setting, in forgiving ourselves constantly takes work until it becomes second nature. This is sometimes known as getting out of your head. Another way to look at this is meeting ourselves where we are, to be okay with whatever skills and experience we happen to have right here, right now, at this time, to be okay with who we are at this moment, right here, right now. Now, this is important because when we learn to meet ourselves where we are, it becomes so much easier to meet others where they are. Practice number two, flexibility. This, in this rapidly changing world, this can be a, become a matter of survival. Making friends with uncertainty has been very helpful for me and many of my peers and elders, many of whom have had to reinvent themselves completely and learn com whole new skill sets in order to survive. Acceptance, acceptance, accept ourselves, others, and, and especially the things we have no control over. Listening. Now, 
this is probably the most important practice of all on this list for me. As a musician, listening may be the most important practice of all. Focused listening as a way of understanding and learning. Deep listening to the voices of others in a given ensemble is invaluable. The best musicians I know are the best listeners. The best ministers I know are the best listeners. Now in daily life, the practice of listening is essential not only to connect with others, but also with ourselves. So let me tell you a story about my friend, Judy. Once upon a time, in a small community college in northern Minnesota, Judy was hired fresh out of graduate school as a music teacher. As a first year teacher, she was determined to make her mark with her peers and serve her students to the best of her ability. Now for this to happen, it meant showing up for class every day prepared. And a lot of work went into this preparation. You might even say she was overprepared. She would show up every day with a script and a checklist in her head, knowing exactly what she wanted to teach. And she was just as sure as she could possibly be that this was what her students needed to learn. As the first year of school went on, Judy got busy. She picked up some gigs with a local band, and it all came to a head unexpectedly one especially busy week. She did not get a chance to prepare for this one class. So she shows up bright and early on a Tuesday morning with no script, no checklist, nothing. After everyone got settled down, she asked the eight students in the room, where are you today? What can I help you with? And they went around the room and they had a check-in. And from then on, that class became guided by what the students felt they needed. She describes this as a tipping point in her life as a teacher. Instead of putting down a bunch of data she was sure they needed, she listened. Now, there are people in this world who have a script to follow, and it's a good thing when they stick to it. Now, airline pilots, for example. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Instead of flying to New York, New York LaGuardia Airport, I thought we would fly to Cleveland and visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, that's, that's really not what we need. Now, I had a minor surgical procedure done recently by a physician who's done this particular procedure a hundred, at least a hundred times. He had a script and he knew it like his own name and he followed it. This was very reassuring. Now, back in 1980, I was a jazz guitar major at Daytona Beach Community College, which is now Daytona, you know, University of Florida, Daytona Beach. And they gave me a script to follow. Okay, learn these scales, learn these chords, play these tunes, listen to these artists. So I started learning scales. It was like reciting the alphabet over and over and over again. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. La, 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 la. And I spent lots and lots of hours and hours practicing, and I got really good at playing scales. But it never clicked in my head. I was never able to take what I was learning and make it sound like music. Now, I could learn a song off the radio like that and play it, no problem, which is another way of following a script. It wasn't until many years later when I met Judy at a vocal improvisation workshop at the Omega Institute in upstate New York, I learned how to get off the script. 
I explained to her that I was really struggling when asked to improvise. And she touched her finger to my forehead and said, you have a lifetime of music in you. All you have to do is open your mouth and let it out. She gave me an assignment. Set your kitchen timer for five minutes every day and sing without stopping. Whatever comes out, say yes. Say yes to it. Do this every day. So I did. I went home and I set my kitchen timer and I improvised every day for a year. I still do it every day. After about five or six months of this, I could improvise. Whoa. And then one day I picked up my guitar and I could improvise. With this one simple lesson of learning to listen to myself and forgive myself and be flexible and accept, Judy launched me into the unknown. Now, circling back to our essential list of spiritual practices for improvisers, there is one other thing that is part of the experience of improvisation that's really not, that's not on that list. This feeling of being connected to something greater. Now, it's hard to explain, but I know it when it's happening, and I know it when it's not. Judy calls this being in touch with the mothership. Another way to describe this is being in a flow state. You know, in positive psychology, a flow state is known colloquially as being in the zone. In this mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in the feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of the activity. In essence, flow is characterized by the complete absorption in what one does, and as a result, transforming one sense of time. It's like you sit down, and next thing you know, three hours has gone by. The larger lesson in all this is a need to be open to what is happening in our hearts and in our minds, being aware of what is happening around us, and being open to the larger mystery of life. My dear friend Lynn Kuntz is the music director at the Hinshaw United Methodist Church in Greensboro. Lynn is a passionate improviser and circle song leader. When I asked her what her role, what when I asked her what role improvisation plays in her life, she said, and I quote, my hope is that improvisation will keep me humbling, humbly seeking a higher calling to help me let go of inhibition and give me an openness in which to channel it. Now, I believe that the building blocks of this experience are the practices we touched on earlier. But here is where the line of forgiveness and acceptance begins to blur, saying yes to whatever is happening in this moment. Forgiving ourselves for any perceived mistakes and being okay with what is. That's a real challenge. Being comfortable with the experiences and skills we possess at this moment. Flexible enough to meet others in our lives where they are. Above all of this, listening. Listening to the voices of others, to what is being said, as well as what is not. To our hearts and to that small, still voice. Improvisation is an art and a practice. That means it's going to take some work. Let's try and see it. Let's try and see it as a part of the journey in our day-to-day -day lives. Improvisation is the art of forgiving ourselves again and again and again. Improvisation is about being in the moment here, now. Improvisation is about listening and being flexible. 
Improvisation is about seeking a connection with the higher power. Improvisation is about making something out of whatever is at hand. Whether it's dinner or a situation we have found ourselves in. This can mean accepting what is in our lives or seeing an opportunity instead of problems. So I would invite us all to be singers. I would invite us all to be improvisers every day. May you embrace the dance of the unknown. Amen. And may this be so. Eric, thank you so, so much. Our Eric will now do our closing song uh, for what it's worth written by Stephen Stills. All right, everybody hear me? You know, as a songwriter, I often wonder what makes a great song great. Well, one of the things that makes this song so great is that it's just as relevant today as it was back in 1965 when it was released. There's something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware I think it's time we stop Hey, watch that sound Everybody look what's going down There's battle lines being drawn Nobody's right if everybody's wrong Young people speak in their minds Getting so much resistance from behind Think it's time we stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down What's going down? What a field day for the heat Thousands of people in the street Singing songs, carrying signs Mostly saying, hooray for our side I think it's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down What's going down? strikes deep into your life it will creep starts when you're always afraid step a line man come gonna take you away think it's time we stop children what's that sound everybody look what's going down stop hey what's that sound everybody look what's going stop hey what's that sound Everybody look what's going down What's going down mm, What's going down Eric, thank you so much for the gifts of your message and your music. It's a real blessing to us today. Our closing words, at the heart of improv is the practice of yes and. The first player makes a statement and the second begins their response with the words yes 
and. Yes, and is all about accepting what others have to offer. By saying yes, we accept the reality created by our partners. After the end, we offer new information and engage in the joy of the collaborative process. What might it be like to take this practice into our fellowship life? We don't discount something quickly because it's something we've never encountered before. For example, a perspective or a partnership. What might committee meetings look like if we practice saying yes and? Well, how might it transform our gatherings and social lives? What about our social justice efforts? Together, we explore these questions. Together, we can experiment with spiritual practice of saying yes and. And from that place of acceptance, we might allow ourselves and our world to be transformed. Our chalice extinguishing is by Becky Lawrence. Woo, there we go. As flame is to spirit, so spirit is to breath and breath to song. Though we extinguish the flame in this sanctuary and in this gathering, may we tend it in our hearts until we meet again. When we are together, we circle our round sanctuary and join hands in our closing circle and covenant. For now, we will join together in spirit as we recite our covenant together. Love is the spirit of this fellowship and community is its goal. This is our great covenant, dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. So may it be. We now conclude our recording and move to joys and concerns and our community conversation time.